flow in the nutrients that you don't flow in cells. You never flow cells into a reactor because that, they need to be sterile. So biggest problem, it's not the problem, it's particularly a huge point now, but um, what you don't want to do is grow something other than the cells you're interested in. Like back to, let's say you're growing yeast, you might grow bacteria. So you, you don't put cells in here. You, you prepare this thing, you inoculate, you put cells in there at time equals zero, and then they grow. You don't ever flow them in in the inlet stream. And then we're going to withdraw a stream continuously at some flow rate. It'll be the same as the flow rate going in, typically. Okay. So it'll be constant volume operation. It'll have some amount of the substrate, less than you put in, because it should have been consumed. And we will have made some cells and hopefully some of the product. Okay, that's the idea. All right, so the assumptions here, like I said, sterile feed, no cells in the feed, constant volume operation, perfect mixing as usual. Um, con you'd operate this at constant temperature and pH because the cell likes to grow at a particular temperature and pH, different freeze types to each organism, but you typically know what it is. So that wouldn't be changing. Um, like I mentioned, single rate limiting nutrients. So cells need lots of things to grow, sources of nitrogen and phosphorus and carbon, but we're going to limit just one of them, and we're calling that S. Um, constant yields, I'll come back to that, and we'll assume these cells don't die, or they die at a rate that's really small compared to the rate they grow. Okay, So we won't worry about um, cells actually dying, if they do, but we won't, we won't need to worry about it. Okay, so now we're going to write out balances for these three things. So this is an example where, um, because you probably don't have a lot of experience in that, the, the balances we want are for the three variables I told you. The cell mass or biomass product and the substrate. Okay. So we're going to do a typical balance here. All right. So <coughs> on the right hand side, so this is cells. We're doing a balance on cells. Okay. First of all, the first term here would be the cells that are flowing in in the inlet stream. I told you we don't flow cells in the inlet stream, so there's no term there. It's zero. Okay. This is the rate at which cells flow out of the outlet stream. Okay. The notation here is not ideal. Um, F here means the volumetric flow rate, and this is the concentration per volume. Okay, so this has units of mass of cells per time flowing out. Okay, and then the cells um, grow. Okay, so you, you need a function here, u, that says what rate they grow. That has units of inverse time. Okay, it's called. We've seen this before. It's called the specific growth rate. It's the rate at which cells grow, units of inverse time. You multiply that times x times vr, right? So this has units of mass per time again, okay? So no cells growing in, but cells are removed and cells are created by growth, okay? If these two terms equal each other, the rate at which you remove the cells is equal to the rate at which they grow, then the concentration will be constant. If you remove them faster than they grow, then eventually there won't be any cells left. <coughs> That's called washout. Okay. And then we need the accumulation term. I've already taken the liberty of pulling the volume out because I know it's constant. Now I'm calling volume VR instead of V, but it means the same thing. I tried to make the notation consistent with the picture. So you take, so if you, again, you want to do a balance on cells, you want to figure out the accumulation term. You have to figure out how many cells are in the reactor. This is the concentration of cells in the reactor, grams per liter, multiply that times the volume. You get the grams of cells in the reactor. Take the derivative, that's the accumulation term. Okay? <coughs> Sorry. That's where I get this equation. It's usually convenient to divide through here by the volume and redefine this thing. It's very common with these type of models to, to specify, instead of the flow, the dilution rate. It's just the flow divided by the volume. It has units of um, inverse time. It is 1 over the residence time, just the inverse of the residence time of the reactor. Right? The residence time of the reactor would be the volume divided by the flow. This dilution rate is just the inverse of that. Okay? <coughs> okay, so last time, being 361, I we discussed this problem, and I showed you there's two steady states. So if you look at this equation, you remember how to find a steady state, right? You set the derivative equal to 0 and then you try to find the steady state that corresponds to that. So if you were to set this derivative dx dt equal to 0, you'll see there's two solutions. One solution is just x equals 0. It's in both terms. If it's 0, it satisfies the equation. That's washout. 
means I've not produced any cells at all. That means I, fl I, fl I flow in my substrate and I take out the substrate at the same concentration it came in. I, mi I did mix it up though. That's any consolation. Okay. But I didn't accomplish anything. The other um, steady state of interest is when x is not equal to zero, then you can cancel it and then you get this relationship. The steady state growth rate is equal to the value of this, this solution right there. So we'll talk more about this as we as we move ahead. But this is a common problem we did in 361, right? You write out the equations, and the next thing I do is actually find the steady states. Okay. And then ultimately we might linearize the equation and then do some analysis on that. Okay, so for the product concentration, same kind of thing. Um, do you flow product in the inlet stream? We go, no. Do you want to do that? No. Okay. No, you don't. Okay, so there's no there's no term there because uh, we don't flow product in the inlet stream. This is the rate at which products remove from the outlet stream. It looks just like that term, so it's product. And then you have to have a term that how much product is produced. Okay, for that I have to tell you what this function looks like. But here I'm telling you, you have some rate of production of that product, whatever it is. Okay. It has the same units as mu inverse time. Okay. You multiply that times this time amount of cells and then the volume, and this is the rate at which that product's produced per unit time. It's like grams per time. Okay. Typically this mu up there and this q are some functions. I don't think I talk about that here, but usually they're functions. We'll, we'll get into that sometime. Alright, so that's the rate at which it's taken out of the system. This is the rate at which it's um, produced by the cells. And this again is the accumulation term. <coughs> Find the accumulation term, you have to find how much of the product is in the reactor. So you have the product concentration in the reactor, multiply times the volume, that's mass of product. Take the derivative, that's mass of product per time, accumulation term. And same thing we did up there, divide by the volume, it'll cancel there, call this thing B, we get this equation. Okay, so that's equation two. And, whoops. And this is the last equation and the last line. So now we have to do it on the substrate, because that's the remaining variable of interest. What is the rate at which we provide substrate? It's this. Okay, volumetric flow times mass per volume, that's mass per time. That's the amount of the substrate flowing in. The second term is the amount of the substrate flowing out, because it's a continuous flow system, right? Same flow in and out, different concentrations, obviously. All right, now this, the, way the, the way this works is cells consume the substrate and then produce the product. So we have a term here accounting for the rate at which um, the cells are, sorry, the, the substrate is consumed by the cells. Okay. So this thing here you see is, is the so-called yield coefficient. It tells you how, how efficient the cell is at converting the substrate into biomass. Okay. So if you look at this term, Vr mu times x, that's the same term that we had in the biomass equation. That's the rate at which biomass is produced. Okay. This yield coefficient here converts that thing into what is the rate at which um, the substrate is consumed. In other words, the rate, at sub, the rate at which substrate is consumed is going to be linearly dependent on the rate at which biomass grows. And the proportionality constant in this case is because of the way this is written, 1 over this so-called yield coefficient. I would have to tell you what that is because you wouldn't possibly know. Okay? So it's some measure of how efficient the cell consumes and grows. Okay. And this thing, as we know from the picture, is the concentration of the substrate in the feed. And to get this equation here, not surprisingly, we divide through by the volume. We gather those two terms to get that right there. Okay, written in terms of D and then the volume cancels there. Okay. And if you look at the steady state of this thing, um, so in other words, you set the derivative equal to zero, um, and you're interested in that non-trivial steady state, the one where you produce cells. And if you were to set this term equal to zero here, you know from the previous slide that that steady state D and mu are the same, so you can cancel those, and then you can write this. This gives you a better idea of what this yield coefficient means. Okay. So this is the amount of substrate you put in, that's the amount that came out, so that difference is the amount of substrate the cells consume. You multiply that times this yield coefficient, that's the amount of biomass the cells produce. So the bigger this thing is, the more efficient the cell is at taking the substrate and converting it into biomass. In principle, that would be good. Okay, so finally some notation here that if we look at 
this system, there's three dependent variables. I'll often call those state variables. It means the same thing. They're biomass, substrate, and product. If we want to write this in vector form, which we enjoy, if you remember 361, then we're going to create a vector with these three variables, and we're going to call that vector x or y, old face being vector. Written like this because I don't want to put a column in my slide because it takes too much room, but it's a column vector, right? I wrote it as a row vector, and then remember the transpose that converts it to a column vector, okay? It's a third order system, why? Because we have three differential equations and three dependent variables. For this particular problem, there might be two input variables of interest. One might be this dilution rate, in other words, the flow into the system. I might be interested in changing that flow and seeing what the system behavior will be. Another one might be the uh, concentration of the substrate that I'm introducing into the system of the inline stream. I might want to change that. Okay? In the class, we are going to tend to call the state variables, dependent variables x, and the input variables u. Okay? So I'm telling you, use a vector here of inputs. This is what's new that you've not seen in 361. 361, we never had any inputs. Okay? We just had initial conditions. So. The inputs here, for example, dilution rate, feed substrate, concentration is a vector, again, a column vector. And then we might rewrite these equations with this definition to look like this. It's just a more convenient way of representing the system, right? Three-dimensional differential equation. F here is a vector function. It consists of the right-hand side of those equations stacked up on each other. Okay? And then to solve this equation, you would need some initial condition for the three variables, and you could, in principle, integrate this forward in time, most likely on a computer. All right, so that's it. So with regard to the homework, did we accomplish my lunch? Well, we did. All right. Um, so with regard to the homework, if you don't get the homework, let's say, by 4 o'clock tomorrow, we don't find a way to